and friends. Good to have you with us this morning to fellowship and to commune with God and with one another. We thank you for tuning in to us today as we once again come in the presence of the Lord to give him thanks for keeping us, to give him thanks for his cares and tender mercies towards us, for giving him thanks for providing for us, keeping us, leading us, and directing us. This morning, we're just going to start by reminding ourselves of God's presence with us. Psalm 42 says, As the deer longs for streams of water, so my soul longs for you, O God. My being thirsts for God, the living God. When can I go and see the face of God? My tears have been my food day and night. As they ask daily, where is your God? Those times I recall as I pour out my soul. When I went in procession with the crowd, I went with them to the house of God and made loud cries of thanksgiving with the multitude keeping festival. Why are you don't pass my soul? Why do you groan within me? Wait for God, whom I shall praise again my Savior and my God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. This morning, we're just going to remind ourselves that God is always with us and that he will never leave us or forsake us. When he ascended, he sent the Holy Spirit to abide with us and to comfort us and to lead us into all truth. So this morning, we're going to begin with the song, The Comforter Has Come. Oh, 
Deserving we are, Lord. We thank you that you have looked beyond our faults and you have seen our need for you, Lord. We thank you, Father God, that you indeed came down from heaven and you came to dwell among us and you lived a perfect life, Lord God, so that we could have an example to follow, so that we could be encouraged that you came and suffered and died for us, so that we could be encouraged that you understand everything that we are going through now. And will ever go through because Lord, you suffered in every aspect that man will ever go through. And so, Lord, you understand everything about us, you understand our weakness, you understand our faults, and you know everything about us, Lord God. Even the ear on our head, head, heads are numbered, and so you know us inside, Lord. There's nothing that we can hide from you. And so, Lord God, we just come penitent before your throne of grace this morning. And we just lay it all at your feet. We ask, Lord God, that you will cleanse us and wash us once more from our, from our sins. And just help, Lord God, that we will, you know, be encouraged that you are there to save us and that you are there to um, give us the Holy Spirit to encourage our hearts and to strengthen us so that we can walk this perfect walk. And so, Lord, we just want to come before you this morning and we just want to lay it all down before you. We ask, Lord, that you will inspire the word that will come to us today from Pastor Campbell. We ask that you will just touch him once more. We ask, Lord, that you will inspire him, Lord God, to speak as you lead him. We ask, Lord God, that our listening indeed will also be anointed so that we can be encouraged and so that we can come to repentance, those of us, who have not yet come to know you as Lord and Savior. So Lord, we just present your servant to you today, and we ask that you will have your own sweet way in our lives and in, and in his life. These mercies we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless the name of the Lord. And at this time, we just want to ask that you give a warm welcome in your heart to our dear brother and pastor, Pastor Cody Campbell. Good morning to you brothers and sisters, wherever you are, it's truly a wonderful, wonderful time to be here in God's house, you know, to speak to God's people everywhere, and um, we are truly thankful for this opportunity of lending our voices, you know, to speak to our hearts wherever you are, and that is such a wonderful blessing. Now I'm here this morning to speak to you about a relationship. A relationship that it's truly very difficult for us 
to survive without it. Because when I look back at my life as a little boy, I remember how very much afraid I was of being alone. You know, I always would want to have company around. And because I was an only child at home, you know, I, I, I wouldn't say I got depressed, but I was truly very lonely at times. And growing up, we have come to realize that we are relational beings. We are relational beings. We cannot, brothers and sisters, survive without having close relationships. And I think that is one of the drawbacks in the isolation with this COVID-19 pandemic. You know, when you have to isolate yourself and you have no one to talk to, you have no one to socialize with. You know, um, Jamaicans are a loving people. We love to hug, we love to thumb fist, and all of those things. And because of this pandemic, we have to be staying you know, at least six feet apart. And that really dries up the bones. But I'm here to give you good news. I'm here to give you good news. Because Jesus Christ, when he was about to depart this earth to be back with his father, he understood the problems that the disciples would be experiencing because their trusted friend would not be physically among them. And he understood also that we here in this dispensation, you know, would be having a difficult time if we could not really understand and know without a doubt that Jesus Christ would still be here. And um, last week we spoke about, you know, Jesus telling his disciples, you know, to let not their heart be troubled. And he continued. He says in John chapter 14, verse 15 to 21, If you love me, keep my commands. And I will ask the Father. And he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. Who is this advocate? He says, the spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you or in you. And it will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long the world will not see me anymore. But you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day you will realize that I am in my Father. And you are in me. And I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. What is the message, brothers and sisters, that Jesus Christ here is really trying to get across to the disciples who we were talking to at that time and for us in this age? What is this message that he is sending out to us in these troubled times? Well, the message, brethren, is in verse 18 of John 14. He says, I will not leave you as orphans. So despite the fact that Jesus will not be physically present here with us in flesh and blood, he is saying that he will not leave us as orphans. He will come to you. And you will say, how can that be possible? The fact that he was crucified on Calvary's cross and he was no more being able to walk around with them. How would that be possible that he would still be here with us? Because he, he told us in no uncertain terms that I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. In this present life, brethren, the reality of life we are chasing after, it just gives us momentary pleasure. It is not something that, you know, that will, will spur us on for all times, because brethren, no matter how much you have materially, if you do not have relationships, loving relationships, you will never ever one day enjoy your material possessions. Because I know a lot of people, if they even cook, they cannot enjoy the meal unless they share it with someone. Because that is how God created us, to have 
relational relationships. So, brethren, if we spend all our time just going after the material things, it will eventually profit us nothing. And Jesus Christ told us, he says, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and then lose his, his soul? It doesn't make any sense. So we really have to understand that we need to nurture relationships. And Jesus Christ has promised us that despite the fact that one day all the material things will disappear, leaving us alone and disappointed if that is what we are trusting in, he says, Jesus will never ever leave us nor forsake us. Jesus is a message, or Jesus' message is that he will be with us, not just in our memories, not just in our thoughts, but he will be with us in the person of the Holy Spirit. And that is really good news. And as I said early on, we are relational beings, brothers and sisters. We strive on being in loving relationships, whether it was with family members, whether it is with our fellow workers, whether it is um, with our neighbors. We truly need to have that relationship. You know, I remembered once upon a time, you know, um, I had this friend, you know, this girlfriend. Um, and one day I just saw her and caught her and she did not even utter a word. And for years, I could never ever understand why she would not talk to me. And it really pained my heart because up to now I do not know what I did her. That is what relationships does to us. We really need to be connected to each other, brothers and sisters. As it says, we are relational beings. Early on, Jesus Christ reminded us not to let our hearts be troubled because he was leaving us physically, brethren. We need to really understand that what God has started within us, he will never ever stop part of the way, but he has promised that he will bring it through to completion. Jesus Christ will never ever let us down. There's a song that says, um, you just call on my name and I will be there. I will be there. You know, there are some so-called friends that we have when we truly need them. We cannot find them. Jesus Christ is not like that. Jesus Christ says that call on me and I will answer. The Holy Spirit who has come and made his abode in us, brothers and sisters. He is all of three things to us. He is all of three things to us. He is three things and more, but I just want to focus on three things today. One is our companion. Two, he is our connection to God. And three, he is our coach who will truly, you know, mold us and shape us into what we are truly to become. Right? So firstly, we want to deal with that companionship. Firstly, the Holy Spirit is our constant companion. He is always there. Jesus Christ, when he, he said that he would never ever leave us as orphans, he says that I will send to you the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, and he will be with you forever. Some people think that, well, if you slip, if you sin today, then the Holy Spirit leaves you. And until you repent, he will not come back to you. The Bible does not support. Because without the Holy Spirit there within you, you cannot come back. He's the only one that can bring you back into the Father. Because the flesh cannot do the things of the Spirit or even understand the things of the Spirit. It is only the Holy Spirit who can truly, you know, help us to understand spiritual things. So the Holy Spirit, he allays our fears. When we wake up in the morning and we see all the troubles confronting us, he is the one who will truly touch our innermost being and remind us that we are not alone, that he is there to help us to face the day. He comforts us, brothers and sisters, in our anxieties. 
and even pray on our behalf when we cannot find words to express the deep anguish that we may be going through. That is who the Holy Spirit is to us. He is there for us in troubled times. Yes. So no matter how insurmountable our trials may be, He's always there with us, helping us along the way. Since Romans 8 verse 26 tells us, The Spirit also helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought to. But the Spirit himself, he makes intercessions for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. That is what the Holy Spirit helps us to do. When we cannot do things for ourselves, he chips in and he assists us, brothers and sisters. And that is why when you understand who God is for the human race, you cannot but help love him. You have to be in a love relationship with him. Because when you look back at your life, brothers and sisters, every single thing that you see happening, you can truly see God's hands in it. You know, I have a friend who, how he fell in love with God was that he said he saw a young man one day cursing God. And to how overwhelmed he was, he said he was just waiting because he knew based on how, you know, this young man was going on that God was going to strike him down. And when he saw the guy, you know, finish, um, you know, spurring out all those bad stuff and he he start, still saw him standing. You know, the only thing that came to him is that God is truly love. And that allowed him to draw closer to God because he said, yes, this is the kind of father that I want. Our worst fear, brothers and sisters, is being alone. When the whole world seems to be coming down to us, we do not want to be there all by ourselves. We really need help. You know, I, I, I know of some persons, if we are having a lot of rains, especially at night, and they are alone, wow, they are so depressed because they truly would need somebody to talk. Because, you know, as I say, the raindrops falling on the rooftop is so comforting and soothing, you know, but you just don't want to enjoy by yourself. And, and that is the same thing with God, you know. God... You know, the, the, the triuneness of God has been enjoying this love relationship. And they're saying it is so sweet. We have to share it. So he created mankind to share that love relationship for all eternity. And that is why, brothers and sisters, we need to nurture this relationship, you know, building block that we have around us. You know, John told us, he says, how that you, how can you say that you love God who you cannot see with your physical eyes and hate your brothers and sisters who you can see physically? We need to be focusing on our relationships, brothers and sisters, you know? Sometimes we experience the Spirit's company, you know, in, in many different ways that we, 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 we do not even realize. Because sometimes when you are faced with difficulty, a calm assurance just comes over you. That is the Holy Spirit at work. Because, brethren, we, we know when certain things come upon us, we of ourselves, we cannot, brethren, go through it. Sometimes he will speak love for us through other people who, are, who appear you know, at, at a very opportune time. And you have to just say, thank you, God, you understood you know, what exactly what I was going through, right? And when that happened, it truly reminds us that God always remembers us, is there for us. Yes, sometimes also he will speak to us through the words of the Bible. Because sometimes when certain things affect us, he will just send us in there. And just by turning to you know, a particular passage, when you start to read it, it really addresses 
you know, whatever difficulty you are facing at that time. That is how the Holy Spirit works, brethren. So the Spirit is our con constant companion. I will not leave you as orphan. I will come to you. That is a promise. Secondly, so we just spoke about the Holy Spirit being our constant companion. Secondly, the Holy Spirit is our connection to God. Remember, brothers and sisters, that when sin came into the world, we were disconnected from God, the Father. And we were just out there in our wretchedness. But God had a plan from the beginning. Jesus' sacrifice, brothers and sisters, removed that separation when he went on the cross of Calvary. Because when he went on the cross of Calvary, that movement allowed the Holy Spirit to come and to dwell within us. To really separate, um, I shouldn't say separate, to remove what was separating us. Because as I said, when Jesus Christ was crucified, that veil that separated the people from the holiest of holies, that was torn in two, thus showing that we had direct access now to the throne of God. And that is what the Holy Spirit does to us. He, he really makes it possible for us not to go to the pastor to ask the pastor to pray for us. Yes, that is good. But we ourselves, we can approach God and talk to him because he is our father. That is what the Holy Spirit does. He provides that connection, brothers and sisters, that we can truly be not afraid. You know, the children of Israel, God used to speak to them directly. And because the Holy Spirit wasn't in them, they could not deal with a direct confrontation from their father. But we, brothers and sisters, we are not in that kind of a mindset anymore because we understand that we have a comforter who resides in us, who helps us to go boldly before the throne of grace and to just talk to our Father, who we know without a shadow of a doubt loves us beyond our wildest imagination. The Holy Spirit speaks to us, brothers and sisters, about the way to life. He speaks to us about the standards of living as God's chosen people in the world. So he reassures us, brothers and sisters, that not because we may stumble today, that alone cannot break that connection between us and God. As Paul reminds us that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Once we are not in the habit of living a godless life, then when we fall down, brothers and sisters, there is no condemnation. Because the Holy Spirit has given us that connection to God where we can boldly come to him and say, Lord, I understand my weakness. Help me with that weakness. If our faith is not so strong, we can go to God because of that connection and just ask him to help us in our unbelief. That is the God we serve. That is why the Holy Spirit is here with us, brothers and sisters, to help us to be connected. You know, in, in this day and age of, of technology, we cannot even trust the internet. Because we a lot of times, when, when we are depending on the internet to do all kinds of things, the connection is not good at all. The connection is here, this moment, and another time. It is not here. The Holy Spirit allows our connection to God to be on a 24-hour basis, brothers and sisters. Nothing can separate us from God, from being connected to God. So brethren, when the Holy Spirit starts to connect us with God the Father, our connection with the old way of life 
starts to get repulsive when the Holy Spirit connects us to God, brothers and sisters. We start to hate the old life that we were living. It becomes very distasteful because what happens is that this, this new connection that we have gotten, it, it just gets sweeter and sweeter and sweeter every day. So we soon start to realize, brethren, that truly I have been crucified with Christ. And it is now no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me. And we understand that it is me that God gave himself for. Isn't that wonderful, brothers and sisters? You can find those reassuring words in Galatians 2 verse 20. And we can truly join with the songwriter who says, his voice truly makes a difference. When he speaks, he relieves my troubled mind. When we wake up in the morning, brothers and sisters, as it says, the Holy Spirit connects us to the peace of God, giving us an assurance that he will be with us every step of the way toward the day. The Holy Spirit is truly our connection. And finally, the Holy Spirit is our coach. And you, you'd say, how, 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 can, how can that come into the link? But just picture a team. Any team sport. Or even a team at the workplace. Because you can have life coach. You know, you can have coach that helps you to speak before an audience. But coaches, a coach job, a coach's job is to get the best out of you. And a lot of the times, the things that he would demand of you will bring some pain from time to time. But if you stick to those rules that he lays down to you, you are going to see fruits that is going to be born that will bring joy to your life. You know, a lot of the times you will see athletes going on the Olympic stage and in nine seconds or nine point something seconds, a race is over and he's victorious. And you do not realize how many hours and hours and hours he had to be spending with his coach to really get through this time. So, brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit, is our coach. Right? He wants the best for you in the end. Listen to what Jesus says. If you love me, you will keep my commands. And keep here, brethren, doesn't just mean to obey. It means to hold dear, to understand that what Jesus Christ is saying is the best for us. One can really keep all the rules that are laid down here, and yet you are not convinced that they are the best for us. But this word, keep, means that you love the ways that Christ is showing you by the Holy Spirit and in his word, and you will see them. You will see in them the secret of life. So finally, brothers and sisters, following God's way isn't about winning God's favor. It's about living the best life. It's playing the game the coach's way. So, brothers and sisters, Jesus is telling us right now that life is about to change drastically. It's a transition of considerable force. The kingdom is coming and it's going to come through us as ambassadors of God's kingdom. Once more, because I live, which is Jesus Christ, you also will live. So says Jesus Christ. So may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. God bless you.